Hi, noteworthy fans. I wanted to pop on tonight and talk a little bit about one of the major questions that I get the most from people, which is why did I start the studio and how did I decide to make this my career because it is a little bit unconventional. So I figured I'd share that story with y'all and if you haven't already heard it, if you have, then keep scrolling <laughs> or you can ask me questions in the comments if you have more questions about what I'm doing and what we're doing here at the studio. So anyway, um, briefly, the history of me taking lessons is that I was a stubborn little punk taking piano lessons. If you don't believe me, ask my mom. She pretty much had to hog tie me to a piano bench for a long time <laughs> and I went through a bunch of music teachers and I was pretty much a disaster and that pretty much continued through high school. <laughs> Luckily I had a saint of a piano teacher named Mary Smalley who was a legend in my hometown and if it were not for her complete and utter dedication and patience when I say patience, I mean the woman was a saint. The amount of patience that she had with me as a teenager, I would not have continued playing the piano. I actually quit playing lesson. I quit taking lessons a couple of times. I just flat out quit. And then I always went back though because I loved the piano. And because my mom was and is a very active piano player and it was always around. So, that's pretty much how my piano career started. My mom would also probably tell you that I just about came out of the womb singing and my brothers would for sure tell you that I never shut up. So that's how I started singing. Plus I was heavily involved in church and I was always singing in the kids choir at church and my mom encouraged me to sing and she would play the piano and I would sing Annie songs and it was, fun times and when my brothers would call home from college I would regale them with what was surely really bad singing at the top of my lungs but that was how I showed them that I was happy to be talking to them so anyway um, I also had you know fantastic teachers in high school who were also very patient with me um, in chorus and in band and for those of you who don't know, I had, you know, just a really horrendous accident when I was getting ready to go into high school and I injured my hand pretty severely. And we weren't really sure if I was going to be able to play the piano anymore, if I was going to be able to go back to playing the saxophone because of the injuries in my hand. But as it turned out, um, I went back to playing the piano and rehabbed my hand and my arm and got back to being able to play the saxophone and became the biggest marching band nerd that you've maybe ever met in your life. And that's the truth. <laughs> so I was sort of their leader. Anyway, I absolutely loved music and when I got to high school and I got ready to be done with high school, it was kind of a matter of what is she going to do and what else would she do besides music? So that's that. That's the story. So I went into music and I thought I was going to be a band director. And then I decided that I didn't really like playing the saxophone that much because it's the saxophone and I wasn't into jazz. I wanted to sing rock music, man. So... Anyway, I had a fantastic teacher in college who encouraged me to get my business minor. So thanks, Janine. Without you, I wouldn't be running a business and having any kind of concept or clue of what I was doing. So I taught out of my house for a really long time. And I decided that I wanted to move my studio out of the house and bring in other teachers who were young teachers I've got three amazing young women who are my um, apprentice, Haley, and then my two associate teachers, Hannah and Hannah. And they are just amazing young women and musicians. And what I decided to do was mentor some young teachers because I didn't have that when I came out of college. And I wanted to be able to help them 
um, learn faster than I did how to be a fantastic private teacher. Because as arts disappear out of the schools, the private studios are where families like you are coming to sort of fill in those gaps. One of the things that we do is make sure that we cater to every single student needs. What does that mean? It means that if we have students who struggle with ADHD, we work with their parents to make sure that what we're doing in lessons is helpful to the learning process, not hurtful. And we're constantly tweaking those plans and changing how we do things and restructuring lessons and making sure that what we're doing is 100% what that student needs, not the other way around. Students come first here and that's the way that's the way it's always been for me as a teacher and that's the way it will always be for me as a studio owner and a mentor of my younger teachers. Our goal is to make sure that our students are getting what they need from us first and foremost. That's the only thing we care about. And we also believe in treating and training the whole singer or the whole musician. And what does that mean? It means that some days our students are having bad days and sometimes they just need to talk. So we take a little bit of time, we talk it out, we hug it out sometimes if that's what they need. And we make sure that they're doing okay emotionally because music is very emotional. And if our singers are not doing well emotionally, if our piano players are struggling they can't really tap into the joy of music because they're struggling on the inside. We also address health issues. So especially with our singers, we make sure that they are hydrating properly. We talk to them about acid reflux for some of our students if they're having symptoms. We talk to them about what a proper diet looks like because I have some teenage boys who like to eat like garbage disposals. and you know, Big Macs and French fries are not so fantastic for your voice. So we talk about those things. That's sort of what sets us apart from other multi-teacher studios really is that we're interested in making sure that our students are as a whole being trained, not just to play an instrument or sing a song, but to be better humans. Cause let's face it, without better humans, we don't become better as a culture, right? So that's sort of, in a nutshell, our passion here at a Noteworthy Music Studio. I don't think I ever really talk to people about that explicitly, and it's time for me to start doing that because I want you all to know why we're here, what our mission is, how much you mean to us, how valuable every single student is, how valuable you are as parents, how much we as teachers appreciate you being our partners in music education. And we're part of your village. It takes a village to raise a kid, right? And we're part of your village. We might not have our own kids. Well, I mean, I have fur kids. Y'all know Penny's my baby. But we are part of your village and so we want you to know that we see you, we are here for you if you need help from us, if you need special, um, not privileges, but if you need special accommodations, tell us. That's what we're here for. We're here to make sure that you have everything you need and that your student needs to be a fantastic, well-rounded musician and human. So thanks for tuning in. I hope that this gives you a little insight into the quirkiness and the fabulousness that is our studio and why I started this whole fantastic, fun, sparkly, crazy pink and purple roller coaster to begin with. So um, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. If you have comments about anything, you know where to leave those. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in lessons.